Now, um, allow me at this point in time to introduce Luke Cole. Luke is the CTO for Coltec, um, who has a, a very interesting thing to discuss with you today, and that is the robots and the future of road construction. Please, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Luke, please. Thank you. Thanks, Ian, and uh, welcome everybody. Thanks to all the organisers of uh, the Connect Expo. My name's Luke Cole. I'm the CTO of Coltec. So who is Coltec? Well, in simple terms, inventors, entrepreneurs and companies come to us to turn ideas into reality. We work in a broad range of hardware and software projects, such as robotics, product development, prototyping, computer security and surveillance. We also review complex problems with the aim to find solutions. We're able to do all this due to background in robotics R&D. Our team is comprised of unique individuals who have been passionately learning and developing their technical arts since childhood. So why are we here today? Well, today we'll be sharing with you a complex problem in road construction and a few key points that were outlined through a review process through tightly coupled discussions with the Australian Asphalt Pavement Association, also known as APA. Our talk will be broken into a few components, the problem and what we plan to focus on, existing road construction technology, challenges in robotics, and then some robotic, existing robotics technology, and finally we'll finish up with probably the most exciting part of our talk, the possible future scenario. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, it's chiefly safety and performance. In terms of safety, there's 10 deaths a year and more than 5,000 recordable instances. This directly impacts the safety of workers. In terms of performance, there's inefficient use of fuel and non-optimal non pavement quality. Performance is directly related to the human eye accuracy and the skills of the worker on that day. This also adds overhead in time materials, which causes non-optimal turnaround time, subjective operations and unnecessary costs. So we plan to focus on trying to solve these problems using robotic and automated methods. We plan to focus on traffic control, traffic cone management, and asphalt compactors, or they're simply known as rollers. In terms of traffic control, the key tool is the flagger. Traditionally, this role was done by humans. In fact, in Australia, it's still done mostly by humans. I'm sure you, you would all agree that there surely would be a better method, such as an automated process. So what does exist in the automated flagger world today? Well, here we see a few trailer-based solutions. On the left-hand side, we uh, have an Australian-based version. It has a traffic light, it has a solar panel, and it has batteries. It has a few modes, as far as I understand it. Auto, manual, and sensor-driven. Auto mode is based on a timer. Uh, manual mode is based on remote control, and sensor-driven allows you to have an additional device to detect if the car is approaching or not. That way, when the car is approaching, some time has passed, the uh, traffic light can go from red to green. On the right hand side we see an overseas version, quite similar to what we have here, except it has a few more features, a rotational sign and it has a boom gate. Now for traffic cone management, there's a few systems that exist around the world today. Um, as you can see there, they're quite a variety. From our, from our point of view, the most the biggest hurdle with these type of products is they only tailored to one particular traffic cone. From my understanding, there's different types of traffic cones that a roadwork site might use. They're also ugly, quite bulky, and still require a human in a, to work in an unsafe environment. Surely there's a better way. Uh, lastly, in the existing road construction technology, we have rollers. So there is intelligent rollers. They're called IC rollers for short, intelligent compaction rollers. They're equipped with a variety of sensors. These sensors are not used to auto-drive the vehicle. In fact, they're used to assess the asphalt quality. And there's an onboard display, which allows you to measure the number of passes that have gone by. This ensures full and consistent coverage of the asphalt. Also, it work, aids work at night during times of low visibility. For soil compaction, it identifies areas of weak support. Now, for the challenges in robotics, there's a few key areas that we focus on. The primary thing you need to do in robotics is navigation. Once you've got navigation, things uh, that's another problem, but we'll focus on navigation for now. Uh, now that's known in the robotics industry as three key questions. Where am I? 
Where am I going and how do I get there? Or how am I getting there without collisions? Where am I going is known as robotics localization. That if, you're, if you can imagine yourself being blindfolded and put it in a, in a dark room and you get, suddenly get the question, where am I? So it's a hard problem. If you're outdoors, you might think you use GPS. Well, indoors, there's no GPS. And even GPS doesn't have the accuracy required. Where am I going is known as goal recognition. We won't get into that in detail, but for a semi-autonomous solution, a human would give the operations through a GPS waypoint similar to your GPS navigation in your car. How do I get there is known as path clean. That's quite simple. We do it in, with our GPS navigators all the time. But how do I get there without collisions? That's the big difficult one. I've got to avoid obstacles. To solve some of these questions, we use sensors. There's a variety of different sensors available. Uh, for localization, we can use odometry, which is wheel encoders. Uh, we can use GPS and IMU, which is a combination of accelerometers and gyros. But all these sensors have issues. Your um, GPS doesn't have the greatest accuracy, and if you want to go the RTK GPS to get to a centimetre, that's going to cost a lot. It is coming down in price, but it's still a, a cost of figure, and it's not going to give you any information about your heading direction. Odometry suffers from drift, and IMUs, and GPS, uh, gyros, and that sort of thing suffer from noise and drift as well. To avoid obstacles, we need distance measurement type devices, such as ultrasonic sensors and LIDARs. Ultrasonic sensors have various issues. They're going to go to a certain amount of meters and have a wide sensor beam. LiDAR is quite expensive. Uh, vision is probably the most pro um, promising one, but it's quite rich in information. So it's hard to filter what's, what you're actually looking at. Uh, it's also affected by the clouds, the sun, all those sorts of things, any dust, smoke. Uh, and I guess in a nutshell, sensing is a hard problem. There's no one size fits all solution. Now, let's talk about some of the existing robotics technology that's out there. So here we've got three key areas. We've got earthworks trucks, we've got uh, ag industry and mining. Um, in the uh, earthworks industry, looking at the picture on the top left, uh, we see two GPS antennas. That's used for two reasons. One, to work out the orientation of the vehicle, but also to measure the height of the implement. On the right hand side, we see some displays showing a field map in an agricultural environment. You also notice there's a driver on board. In both these situations, the vehicle is driving itself. Well, kind of, sometimes. In fact, the driver is still required to be on board for safety. It's, these days, it can only still do uh, steering control, it can't do speed, it can't do complex navigations, and it can't do end turns. Uh, the bottom one, we have the mining industry. That's been in operation, I think, about 2009. They're still controlled remotely from about 1,200 kilometers, I believe. Uh, I guess another thing to add here is that um, I've seen in the I've worked in the uh, ag industry myself, and I've seen the technology been around since the 80s as far as steering control, but as far as the speed control and that sort of thing, it still hasn't come out um, at this stage. I've worked on proof of concepts for uh, speed control, uh, obstacle avoidance, using vision for localization. All these ideas still haven't come into fruition because it takes a while for, to, for the adoption and safety. Uh, in the automated car industry, we've got the most famous one, the Google car. Uh, this technology has been around for a while. I was also fortunate enough to work with uh, Nikta back in early 2000 to build an autonomous car. We're only starting to see this stuff now as if it's brand new. Um, on the top right hand side, we see uh, a German made car. It has equipped with various sensors. It's not used to auto drive the vehicle, but it's used for driver assist. Uh, at the bottom left, we see a plug in unit. Cruise, it's a $10,000 unit that can be plugged in most Audi cars. Uh, it's an autopilot for highways, effectively. They see this technology as the stepping stone of the Google car. And on the bottom right, we see the Tesla, again, still in development. Now, for some cool stuff, there's uh, robotics. We all see this is a nice variety of different robots you probably might have seen or not. On the top right hand corner, we see a military type robot. It's probably about as simple as it gets, it's just a remote control unit can go upstairs and manipulate objects. The next two, we have some uh, delivery-based solutions. So you've got Prime Air from Amazon and Domino's Drew. Both of these systems seem quite promising, but they're still in development. I guess the biggest hurdle for these is privacy, security, and safety from one location to another. On the far right, we see two dummy-based ideas. The bottom one's from Marathon Targets, developed right here in Australia. 
They're used by the military to simulate target practice in a, for a battle zone. The top right was um, a, a dummy on a, seg a, dummy on a, a low profile sca skateboard. Effectively, I was involved in that project for taking it to German car manufacturers as a tool to be able to simulate pedestrians to test their uh, semi-autonomous and autonomous cars that they're planning for. When I went there, I got to see, um, basically went to all the R&D car factories of Germany, and I was informed there that, um, that their European goal was to have all cars avoid other cars, and not long after that, all cars avoid pedestrians. On the bottom is probably some of the most famous ones, Boston Dynamics. I uh, got famous by the big dog on the, on the uh, right there. You probably have seen how cool the videos are, it looks so animal-like, it looks very lifelike. But you probably heard how noisy it is too. That's another big problem for robotics, energy. And that's why it was an easy, it was a petrol-driven system. Some of the humanoid ones also look very fantastic. Um, but don't be fooled by what you see. They've got uh, artificial targets on the things that they're picking up and opening doors. This technology has a long way to go before you see anything like iRobot. So that brings us to some ideas for trying to solve this um, technology for the road construction industry. So we asked APA what they seen as the objectives to get this technology out there. And then we first looked at the flag and they gave us three key points. They said it needs to look like a human, which is create an instinctive ability from humans to react to another human face. They also wanted to move on and off the road, just like a, a uh, flag would today. They also wanted it not to be trailer based because they don't want to use resources or put a human in danger to carry the, uh, the trailer based solution down the road construction site as the road construction progresses. So we came up with this solution, basically done on a setway. The only difference is, compared to marathon targets, we've just put it in personal protective clothes and used a, a slow stop sign. Quite simple, apart from the fact that uh, it's going to be traversing on ground, which is, is it's difficult. Uh, next, we looked at traffic cones and we thought, why not use our uh, Segway unit and put some devices on the side to drop traffic cones? Seemed logical, but there's lots of engineering challenges with that. Weight distribution, those sorts of things. So we thought, drones would be better for this. The only problem we can see is payload, how we're going to handle the payload. So we did some research and found that traffic cones can weigh from one kilogram to about eight kilograms. An octocopter can support up to nine kilograms, I believe. Um, so it seemed feasible. Drone delivery systems are being worked on, so it seemed like a quite unique and novel way to go about it. I guess the other big advantage of using drones is that we can drop the cones down in one pattern in one fell swoop using a swarm, of course. Uh, so that's never been done before, they're always one at a time. And they can be vertically stacked with ease. And also they can be used for surveillance of other types of things. Now to uh, put all these systems in, in use, we have power as a massive problem, so we thought, okay, we need a command centre. That could be used as a docking station. Also used, um, you could have your, your controllers in there, your operators. Um, also the swarm that Apple would like, they wanted it to be able to see um, different uh, log, effectively all the cars that are coming through, so they can do counting of the different cars. And also they wanted traffic queue optimization. So if you have a truck coming, they want to bring that truck through first. And the reason is, uh, it's because they want to keep the economy moving and also to stop wear and tear or reduce wear and tear on, on the um, trucks themselves. So we came up with this idea, which is effectively got some renewable resources like solar panels and they can all, the drones can all charge on top and you can have your fl robot flaggers on the inside. Now lastly, we looked at rollers. Now I've been involved with the ag industry and I've done stuff with mining as well. And so I've seen the technology already existing there. I was quite surprised that it doesn't even exist in, in the road construction industry already. So here we see a, uh, a futuristic type roller. So there's no cabs, no aircon, no controls. Much cheaper to make that way. Um, I imagine this being rolled out in a similar process to the ag industry. So it would be a driver on board initially doing steering based uh, control only. Then we'd venture out to speed and avoiding obstacles and that sort of thing. Eventually then you can take off the driver and have this type of scenario. So now I'll uh, introduce you to an animation showing all these concepts put together. Please play. So here we have our command center with our drones on top charging and our robot flaggers on the inside. Two clones in the inside operating. We 
here, here we have our, what's been known as the drone cones in the industry now. I guess what's different here is we can drop them all down at one time, don't forget that. Here they are doing some information gathering, counting cars, collecting Wi-Fi packets, Bluetooth information, so it can uh, ID you and see you through successive road construction sites. Here we see a demo of the flagger as it might be used. You see the sign is always facing towards the road. Now we're going to the future a little bit, we're going to have a Google car, most likely, or some sort of autonomous car. Now, it, I would imagine, would receive a signal automatically from the road construction side ahead. So you'll see an in-cab view now. So a message has been received and it automatically proceeds with caution. And here's our roller. No cab, no air con, no controls. And we have our swarm out the back doing more information gathering. So where should we start? Well, we already have a robot, so we thought, why not we stick a plug-in unit for it? And we call it the Robot Flagger. And let me introduce you, the world's first Robot Flagger. It'll slowly come out. So on the bottom here, we have Scotty, our robots used by different industries for proof of concepts, uh, mining industry, and that sort of thing, have used it for different projects. So we just built a plug-in unit, just to demonstrate this stuff can be done. Now at the moment this is teleoperated. I imagine down the future it's going to be GPS waypointed control. The sign will be programmed to know where the road is. So the driver, the uh, operator can just click a click of a button and it will always face the road in the appropriate way. And it's on a four-wheel based device. We went that way because like marathon targets, it's going to have better stability and also require less power, power from balancing all the time. And that's it. Thanks everyone. Let's bring on the future. Thank, thank you, Colin. It was very interesting. And it's, it, it's lovely because we've actually actually seen some technology here today. So thank you very much for bringing oh. the, your, your robot. Have you ever dressed it up as a Dalek for birthdays or anything like that? I'll put it on the to-do list. On the to <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions for Colin? We are a little bit tight for time today, so I think we're, we're good to go. Cole, a big round of applause for Cole. Thank you. Thank you very much.